Hello and welcome to another TLDR video. With countries around the world beginning to ease their lockdown measures, discussion over the potential for a second peak has slowly begun to creep up. Over on our UK channel, we've put out a video on exactly that, how a second peak could arise, why people are concerned and what it could mean. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at one specific country, Germany. As I just mentioned, there's a brand new video on the TLDR UK channel which goes into more detail about the idea of a second wave, how countries are coping and what the UK is trying to do to prevent a second wave of Covid cases. If you want to check out that video then it's linked down below. Also be sure to subscribe to this channel and TLDI UK for all of the latest updates. Throughout this crisis we've constantly referred to Germany as the gold standard. Countries around the globe have used Germany as an example to follow, with news outlets from across the political spectrum praising its response. From The Telegraph saying, how Germany got it right while the UK got it wrong, through to the BBC, on what the UK can learn from Germany on testing, and The Guardian stating that Germany is a model for others to emulate. Even Professor Chris Whitty, the government's chief medical advisor, in one of the daily press conferences acknowledged Germany's strong policy of testing, stating, We all know Germany got ahead in terms of its ability to do testing for the virus, and there's a lot to learn from that. As of the 12th of May, confirmed cases stood at 170,508, an increase of 933 on the previous day. Deaths were at 7,533, an increase of 116, with a mortality rate of just 4.4%, vastly below that of other countries, something which many attribute to widespread testing. For context on the level of testing that Germany is completing, by the end of the 4th of April, Germany were completing an average of nearly 117,000 tests a day, having carried out well over 1.3 million tests. For comparison, by the end of the 10th of April, nearly a week later, the UK had carried out a total of 316,836 tests. By testing a vast amount of people, Germany was able to identify, trace and isolate those with the virus, or those who've come into contact with it, and treat more acute cases quickly. Germany's expenditure on healthcare is, according to Eurostat, the joint highest in the European Union, matching France with 11.3% of GDP, compared to an EU average of 9.9%. While Germany was tracking and tracing, social distancing and restrictions on movement were also put in place before the end of March, with the closure of restaurants, cafes, pubs, public and private sports facilities and the prohibition of religious services. Because of all of this early action, Germany decided it was able to stop short of a full stay-at-home order, never implementing the lockdown regulations that became commonplace in many other countries. And more recently, Germany has begun to lift the restrictions, allowing the reopening of some shops, schools, zoos and churches. And they were able to do that because of a fall in the R0 number, from a peak of 1.3 in early April to a low of 0.7. Germany has had a fascination with the R0 number for a while now, and that's the reproduction rate of the virus, the number of people that on average each infected person will go on to infect. Chancellor Angela Merkel highlighted its importance at the end of April, saying, if we get to a point where each person is infecting 1.1 people, then by October we will be back at the limits of our healthcare system in terms of intensive care beds. If we get to 1.2, then we'll hit the full capacity of our healthcare system as early as July, and if it's 1.3, we'll hit the full capacity of our healthcare system in June. So you can see how little room for manoeuvre we have. And that's why when Germany saw a rise in the R rate following slight relaxation of the coronavirus rules, some began to query whether a second peak might be on its way. At the time of writing, the Robert Koch Institute, the German government's disease control and prevention agency, estimates the R number ranging from 0.79 to 1.1, with the most likely estimate being 0.94, quite close to the boundary of disease picking up again. And if it is closer to the upper bounds of that estimate, then according to Merkel's comments, by October, Germany would hit the limits of their health system. The Institute, in publishing the figures, says the estimate of the reproduction number, R, has been slightly above 1 in the last few days, 
which shows that the decline in the number of new cases that we've observed in recent weeks has leveled off and may be reaching a plateau. So far, we do not expect to see an increasing trend again. The slowdown in the decline of new cases is also related to local outbreaks, for example, in the vicinity of slaughterhouses. Moreover, since case numbers in Germany are slowly depreciating overall, these outbreaks have a greater impact on the value of the reproduction number, R, than if the total number of cases were higher. Overall, therefore, the development of the number of new cases must be observed in the next few days in order to rule out a merely temporary slowdown in the decline. The vice president of the Robert Koch Institute stressed in a press conference that the number will always fluctuate, and as long as it remains around one, that is considered a stagnation and not an increase, stressing again that when there are fewer new cases, individual outbreaks have a stronger influence on the reproduction number. But is it really that simple? Well, the reproduction number can't be used in isolation. In a paper published in the Emerging Infectious Diseases Journal of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the issue of focusing solely on the reproduction rate is highlighted. R0 can be misrepresented, misinterpreted and misapplied in a variety of ways that distort the metric's true meaning and value. Because of these various sources of confusion, R0 must be applied and discussed with caution in research and practice. So is Germany really about to experience a second peak in the very near future? Well, none of us here at TLDR are epidemiologists, but looking at the evidence historically, it doesn't appear to be a pressing issue at the moment. Despite an uptick in the reproduction rate, the spread remains relatively controlled. Looking at data from the John Hopkins Coronavirus Research Centre, Germany has been on a prolonged downward trend after spiking towards the end of March, with daily new cases around 7,000, before zigzagging downwards and settling around 1,000 new cases a day. Of course, there is a lag on data like this, but there doesn't appear to be a rebound in cases just yet. It's also clear that Germany remains confident in keeping the pandemic under control. On the 13th of May, it announced the relaxation of border restrictions from Saturday, moving from systematic to random checks at border crossings with France, Switzerland and Austria, remaining until at least the 15th of June, at which point free travel will be returned in full, with the German interior minister saying, The clear objective is that we want free travel in Europe again, as of mid-June. That presupposes that the infection situation will continue to be as favourable as we're experiencing these days. If public discipline continues to be maintained in the population, with hygiene, face masks and distancing regulations, despite the easing of restrictions in all European countries, then we can imagine that we will have free travel again on June 15th. But I ask you to take this condition into account. And in a further show of confidence, the German Bundesliga has become the world's first major football league to restart, although stadiums will be empty, with a total of just 213 allowed in the stadium, 98 around the pitch, and a further 115 in the stands, ranging from officials to the media. So what do you think? Is Germany right to be lifting the lockdown now, or is it far too soon? And do you think that countries like this risk suffering a second wave? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, you can also get involved in the conversation over on Discord. There's a link to the server down below. And by joining, you can take part in discussions on topics ranging from US politics and the 2020 election to gaming and philosophy. Join the approaching 2,000 people on the Discord today by discussing a variety of topics from a variety of different perspectives. You can also discuss our videos, and if you're a patron, you can access a super exclusive bonus channel where you can talk to Team TLDR as well as other patrons. Check out the Discord today by clicking the link in the description. Of course, we'll continue to keep you updated on the European Union and all of the news that comes out of it, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible.